When we first heard about the SR-72, many thought it was just another concept that would never fly. But the more information came to light, the more obvious it became that Lockheed Martin was working on something truly revolutionary. So what's really going on behind the closed doors of the Skunk Works? Is it true that the next step into the future of American aviation has already been taken, only in secret? Let's find out. A black streamlined body that flows into a smooth, needle-shaped nose, swept wings with two protruding nacelles. One must agree, it sounds like we're describing some kind of futuristic aircraft. But in fact, we're actually talking about the Blackbird Reconnaissance Aircraft, which took off at the height of the Cold War. Equipped with two Pratt & Whitney J-58 turbojet engines, this aircraft could reach a speed of Mach 3.2 and fly at an altitude of 85,000 feet, which forced the pilots to wear spacesuits to avoid losing consciousness. The aircraft had the smallest radar cross-section available to Lockheed at the time of its development, making it one of the earliest attempts at stealth design. The SR-71's black ferrite iron radar absorbing paint radiated heat from the surface far more efficiently than bare metal. Additionally, it reduced skin temperature, thermal stress on the airframe, and gave the Blackbird its menacing appearance. About 85% of the structure was made of titanium, with the rest made of polymer composite materials. To avoid unnecessary waste, Lockheed specialists used an easily machined titanium alloy that softened at a lower temperature. But the high temperatures that arose during flight at several times the speed of sound required a special approach to the design and operation of the aircraft. For example, the main sections of the SR-71's skin were corrugated rather than smooth, causing aerodynamicists to jokingly call the Blackbird the Mach 3 Ford Trimotor, due to the latter's peculiar corrugated aluminum skin. This was quite reasonable for a new aircraft since high temperatures would cause splitting or twisting of smooth skin, while corrugated panels could expand vertically and horizontally, increasing longitudinal strength. The fuselage panels were made to fit loosely on the ground, and proper alignment was achieved only as the SR-71's body heated up, expanding several inches. The outer windshield was made of three layers of glass with cooling sections between them, and the navigation window was made of solid quartz ultrasonically welded to a titanium frame. This ensured that even when the outer windshield reached 600 degrees Fahrenheit during flight, the aircraft remained safe. The State Route 71 was designed with the sole focus of being undetectable on enemy radar. This effort even went as far as using cesium-based fuel additives to reduce the radar visibility of exhaust plumes. However, even this legendary aircraft fell victim to its high cost. That was one of the main reasons Congress decided to stop operating it in 1989. The U.S. Air Force finally retired the State Route 71 in 1998, although NASA continued operating the last two airworthy aircraft until 1999, after which they were placed in museums. As the years passed, the question of a hypersonic successor to the Blackbird became increasingly important. The task was not easy because, according to some sources, over its years of service, the State Route 71 managed to outrun more than 4,000 missiles fired at it, operating with near impunity even in the most hostile airspaces. It is believed that the first rumors about the State Route 72 appeared in 2007, but in fact, the idea emerged in the early 2000s, when Skunk Works realized that the SR-71's era had ended and it was time to prepare a worthy replacement. Between 2006 and 2007, Lockheed engineers, together with the Aerojet Rocketdyne team, began developing an engine capable of hypersonic speeds. Aerojet Rocketdyne applied their scramjet, or supersonic combustion ramjet, technology to the design of the future SR-72's propulsion system. It was meant to use an advanced air-breathing propulsion system that could operate efficiently across all flight regimes, subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic. A turbojet performs well from 0 to Mach 2.2, while ramjets perform best at speeds from Mach 3 to 6. The ideal solution for the Son of Blackbird was a turbine-based combined cycle TBC seat system, using a turbine engine for acceleration and landing, and a scramjet for high-speed flight. The inlet and nozzle of the engines would share a common placement but have separate airflow paths. Like the SR-71, materials were a major challenge for the State Route 72 because aircraft traveling at speeds above Mach 5 experience extreme temperatures, enough to melt standard metal airframes. 
Steel, for instance, begins to melt at around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, while the SR-72's fuselage would need to withstand up to 3,500 degrees or more. Engineers faced the daunting task of creating critical components from composites such as high-performance carbon, ceramic, and metal mixtures similar to those used in ICBMs and space shuttles. In 2013, Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works officially confirmed the development of the SR-72, stating that it would fly twice as fast as its ancestor, up to Mach 6. They noted that the State Route 71 had been built using 20th century technology, with slide rules and paper, without modern computing power. The SR-72, by contrast, would be a completely new generation of aircraft. The design of the new aircraft drew on lessons from the Falcon Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2 HTV-2, a rocket vehicle built to study the main technical challenges of hypersonic flight, including aerodynamics, thermal effects, guidance, and control. The announcement came with the tagline, Speed is the new stealth. Three years later, Lockheed Martin CEO Marilyn Hewson said the company was on the verge of a breakthrough that would allow the State Route 72 not only to reach Mach 6 but also to build a hypersonic prototype roughly the size of an F-22 Raptor for under $1 billion. In 2018, Lockheed Martin Vice President Jack O'Banion confirmed earlier statements, saying that advances in additive manufacturing and computer modeling made the son of Blackbird possible in reality, not just on paper. The SR-72's main weapon is expected to be hypersonic missiles currently under development by the U.S. military. Some argue that releasing or launching such missiles at high speed would create serious engineering challenges. However, Lockheed had already proven the concept by launching air-to-air -air missiles at speeds above Mach 3 using YF-12 interceptor prototypes. We even caught a glimpse of something resembling the State Route 72. Skunk Works helped create the secret hypersonic aircraft, Dark Star, for the film Top Gun, Maverick. Interestingly, about a month before the movie's release, Lockheed Martin's communications director for EMEA, John Nielsen, stated on Twitter that the Dark Star featured in the trailer might be a sneaky peek at the real SR-72, the successor to the iconic State Route 71 Blackbird. Skunk Works, design was so convincing that China reportedly redirected a spy satellite to photograph the concept plane, thinking it might be a real American experimental aircraft, though perhaps they're just fans of great American films.